Okay, so good day everyone. I will be the one to report and discuss about my assigned topic, which is the no the go no go gauge and wire gauge. So let's have first the go no go gauge. Go no go gauge refers to an inspection tool used to check a workpiece against its allowed tolerances via a go or no go test. Its name is derived from two tests, go and fail the other, no go. Go gauge is used serving as the equivalent to one of the part's specified features. If the go gauge fits into the part, then it stands to reason that the mating part does not have excessive material and will also fit, ensuring proper assembly. Likewise, if the no-go gauge does not fit into the part, it shows that the feature under inspection is not lacking material or is not too large and consequently too loose. And it, as, it is also to inspect hole size of a part, the go gauge is inserted into the hole. If the gauge can be entered into the hole, then the hole is considered to be above its low limit. Following that, the no-go gauge is used. If it enters the hole, then the hole is too big. So, at this point, we have the types of go-no-go -go gauges. So, there are seven. Number one, plug gauge. Number two, ring gauge. Number three, snap gauge. Number four, plug gauge. Number five, taper ring gauge. Number six, thread plug gauge. And number seven, plain ring gauge. So, let's have first the plug gauge. In some cases, called pin gauges are metrology tools whose purpose is to gauge the inside diameters of holes that have been drilled or machined into a manufactured part, component, or assembly. And it is also checking, checking holes. So number two, the ring gauge. Compared to plug gauges, ring gauges are used to check if manufactured pin or round feature and external threads are within limits. The purpose of ring gauges used for gauging of externally threaded parts aid in establishing physical limits for maximum material size and thread function. In addition, ring gauges can help detect a lack of roundness or surface discontinuities on the threads. And it is also have two primary functions in manufacturing. A point of reference for setting other measuring instruments or indirect gauging and checking the size and roundness of manufactured parts or direct gauging. So we have number three, the snap gauge. Go and no go type of snap gauges consist of two jaws. The first jaw allows parts to pass whereas the second jaw stops the part. In this way, part width can be verified if it is with limits. Snap gauge is a form of go or no go gauge. It is a limit gauge with permanently or temporarily fixed measurement apertures gaps which is used to quickly verify whether an outside dimension of a part matches a present dimension or falls within predefined tolerances. So number four, we have taper plug gauge. Taper plug gauges are used to check tapered holes. It has two check lines. One is a go line and another is a no-go line. Taper plug gauges are used to check tapered holes. So number five, taper ring gauge. An external gauge having a conical internal contour used to measure external tapers. 
Ring gauges are mainly used for checking the diameter of shafts having a central hole. The hole is accurately finished by grinding and lopping after taking hardening process. So, number six, thread plug gauge. Thread plug gauges, also referred to as thread plug gauges, are used to check inside major diameter and pitch diameter limits on threaded parts. So, let's have number seven, the plain ring gauge. Plain plug gauges are used to check the dimensional tolerances on holes that are bored or drilled with smooth walls. Okay. Okay, so before we're going to proceed, the other, the another topic, which is the wire gauge. So I'm going to show you a video. This is for go-no-go no go gauges. So I want you to watch it. Okay, so this is the first video that I'm going to show you. Double-ended plug gauge. In this video, we are going to see about double-ended plug gauge. In this type, the go end and no go end are arranged on both the sides of the plug. Workpiece. No go. The no-go end must not go into the component feature. Go. Go end of the cage must go into the feature of the component being checked. The double-ended limit plug gauge is used to test the limits of size. This type has the advantage of easy handling. Single-ended plug gauge. In this video, we are going to see about single-ended plug gauge. Consider component go, no go. It is used to test the nominal size of a cylindrical hole. This is generally used for sizes over 63 mm and up to 100 mm. Thread gauge. Let us see a 3D model of a thread gauge. Internal threads are checked with thread plug gauges of Go and No Go variety which employ the same principle as the cylindrical plug gauges. Ring gauge. Let us see a 3D model of a ring gauge. Ring gauge Workpiece These are used to check the outside diameter of the work pieces Separate gauges are used for checking go and no go sizes The no-go end must not go into this feature.
go end of the gauge must be go into the feature of the components being checked. Snap gauge. Let us see a 3D model of a snap gauge. Work piece. Snap gauge. Go and no go. Snap gauges are used as quick means for checking sizes within certain limits by comparing the size of the parts with the opening of the gauge. The no go end must not go into the feature. Go end of the gauge must be go into the feature of the components being checked. Okay, so that's the end of the first video. So here I have the second video. So Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me play it again. Okay. Okay, so katung phrase niya gagamit sa pag-check is the goal. So, as you can see, um, kuan siya na-fit siya, so na-check niya, so okay. Okay siya, na-check siya kay ni kuan man siya ng pag-check niya is na-fit man ang tanan niya nga check So, ang ikaduhan niya nga gagamit is the no-go.
Okay, so that's the end of the second video. So, um, as you can see, um, ang ikaduhan niya nga gigamit, gigamit is the no-go. So, nakita ninyo nga, gigamit niya pag-check, which is dili siya maigo, walay na kuha nila, walay na, ka, walay na fit. So, moto siya ang no-go. Okay, so that's the second video. So, Okay, so, I have here the third video. So, this is for taper plug gauge and taper ring gauge. So, kindly watch. Okay, that went rather well. So, we're on size there now. So, push out gauging <laughs> and the idea was to have no no step or anything across here so we've achieved that so that's put our taper in major diameter she's smack on size so we'll just do the last we'll just do a blue test in here the bearing blue it feels good and then is good to go. Okay, we'll just do the final um, bearing blue test to check our contact on our tapers. Okay. It's looking like we've got perfect contact all the way around. Same with the ring. So, that's a good result. So, this will be our gauge when we do the R8 tapers on all of the tooling that we're about to make up. And this will ensure all our R8 tapers are done specification, all correct, and all be the same, and will fit the quill properly. And um, also going to this extra length, it also helps if you're making R8 tooling. You get the tapers right. It, it, it's it's another part that helps with the repeatability of the tool that you you're putting in in the machine as well. So good result. Okay, so that's the end of the video. So as you can see, it has a good result. So that is for taper plug gauge and tapering gauge. Okay, so and now let's proceed. Let's proceed to wire gauge. So wire gauge is a measurement of wire diameter. This determines the amount of electric current the wire can safely carry as well as its electrical resistance and weight okay so there are two types of wire gauge so number one the british standard wire gauge system or swg and number two american wire gauge system or the awg Okay, so number one, the British Standard Wire Gauge System. The gauge set to the British Standard Wire Gauge System is used in the UK to measure steel wire. You can tell the difference between this and a gauge set to the American Wire Gauge System 
as it has metric measurements on the reverse side. It also starts its measurements from 1 rather than 0. Okay, so number 2, American Wire Gauge System. American Wire Gauge System, also known as Brown and Sharp Gauge, is the United States standard method for denoting the cross-sectional areas of round solid conductors. The cross-sectional area is useful in determining a conductor's current carrying capacity and resistivity. Okay, before we end, I am I'm gonna show you a video for about um about the wire gauge. So Okay, so this is the video, so I hope you can watch then um this is only tagalog so makasabot mas makasabot ta okay so good day po sa inyong lahat ako nga pala si Mr. Rick Bernardo so welcome na naman sa aking youtube channel. So, maraming salamat ulit sa lahat ng nag-subscribe, nag-share, nag-like ng aking uh, video at sana po ay lagi po tayong nasa <coughs> mabuting kalagayan. So, ngayong araw na to ang ipapakita ko sa inyo kung paano gagamitin itong tinatawag natin wire gates. Especially yung mga nagre-rewind ng speaker, ng transformer, ng mga motor, ito ay napaka-importante sa buhay ng isang nagre-rewire. So, itong nakikita nyo malaking butas, ibig sabihin malaki ang wire nyan, ang number nyan ay zero. So, ibig sabihin makapal yung wire. So, ito yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Habang lumiliit yung butas nya, ibig sabihin yung number ay lumalaki. Kaya kapag mataas yung number, asahan mo manipis yung wire. Pag malaki yung butas at maliit yung number, automatic malaki yung wire. So, sa likuran naman nito, ang gamit naman nito ay panukat to ng piece paper. Piece paper, para alam natin kung anong size nito. Ito naman yung plastic mylar, para alam din natin kung anong size nito. So, unahin ko itong piece paper natin. kung saan medyo mahigpit. Ito yung sukat niya. Point zero seventeen. Diyan pumasok ng maayos. Hindi maluwag, hindi masikip. Itong mylar natin, sukatin natin. Dito ang medyo tamang-tama. 0 0.018. Ayan ang sukat ng mila. Example natin, itong magnetic wire. Nakasulat number 20. So, dapat pag sinukat natin yan dito. Ito yung 19. Maluwag masyado. Ito yung 20, tamang-tama. Ito yung 21, masyadong masikip. Ito yung 20. So, kaya ang sukat nito ay number 20. Ito naman ay 22. Sukatin natin. Ito 
21, 22. Pasok. Ayun. Pasok. Pag dito, sa 23, maluwag. Maluwag. Ito siya. Pag dito naman sa 21, mahigpit. Sobra. Kaya dito sa 22. Ayan. Ito naman ay 27 Hirap, 27 Paso, 28 maluwag So, 27 siya So, paano ko yung mga motor natin Ng windings Kukuha tayo ng isang hibla Masusunog lahat yan, pero meron at meron yung isang hibla na matitira. So, itesting natin ito dito. Sobrang impis. Ayun, pasok dito. Kabila. Ah, mas magandang pasok dito. Ayun. Number 35. Yung ginamit dito sa wire na to. Ganun ang paggamit ng ating wire gates. Okay, so muli po, sana po ay meron akong naiambag sa inyo at meron na naman kayong natutunan sa paggamit po ng ating wire gates. Maraming salamat po ulit. Magtingat po tayong lagi at sana po ay lagi po tayong nasa maayos na, na kalagay. Thank you po sa inyong lahat. Mabubay po tayong lahat. Okay, so that's the end of the video about wire gauge. Okay, so that's the last video that nga akong i akong gi play. So before I am going to end, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you learned something from it from the. From the topics that I've discussed earlier, and of course for the videos, I hope you learn something from it. Okay, so maybe that's all, and thank you so much.